Hello students. In today's video, we are going to discuss pharmacology of glucagon like peptide 1, in short GLP-1 receptor agonist and dipeptidyl peptidase 4, in short DPP-4 inhibitors. Now, these are anti-diabetic drugs used as add-on therapy that is used in combination with other anti-diabetic drugs in the treatment of poorly controlled type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now, as we all know, type 2 diabetes mellitus is characterized by hyperglycemia, that is increase in the concentration of glucose in the blood. And type 2 diabetes mellitus is caused either due to reduced functioning of insulin, that is insulin resistance, or due to reduced secretion of insulin or both. Now, GLP-1 receptor agonist and dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors are insulinotropic agents. So, these drugs enhance or these drugs increase insulin secretion from pancreatic beta cells. So, increased secretion of insulin improves transportation of glucose from the blood to the body cells. So, as the glucose moves in the body cells, concentration of the glucose reduces in the blood and this controls type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now, very important, unlike sulfonylureas and maglitinide analogs, action of these drugs is glucose dependent. That means these drugs cause increased insulin secretion only when the levels of glucose are high in the blood. Uh, now let's assume that glucose in the blood is low and still secretion of insulin increases. Now this increased insulin will transport most of the glucose in the blood to the cells of body. This will cause excessive drop in blood glucose levels which will cause hypoglycemia. So these drugs cause increased insulin secretion only when the concentration of glucose is high in the blood. Thus these drugs do not produce hypoglycemia. Now here elevated blood glucose levels postprandially stimulate insulin secretion. That means postprandially after meals when blood glucose rises at that time these drugs increase the secretion of insulin. So, this is the uh, advantage of these drugs that these drugs do not cause hypoglycemia. Now, before discussing pharmacology of uh, these drugs, let's first understand what is GLP-1 and what is DPP-4. Now, GLP-1 that is uh, glucagon like peptide 1 is an incretin. Now, incretins are a group of intestinal hormones. So, GLP-1 is a hormone. Now, carbohydrates in the food we eat are broken down to glucose. Now, this glucose stimulates the gut to release GLP-1. Now, GLP-1 binds to GLP-1 receptors on the pancreas. Now, this induces release of insulin from pancreatic beta cells in response to high glucose levels in the blood. Now, this insulin causes transportation of glucose in the blood to the body cells and therefore, this reduces glucose in the blood. Now, in addition to this, uh, GLP-1, by binding to uh, these GLP-1 receptors, inhibits release of glucagon from the alpha cells. And this also reduces levels of glucose in the blood. So, this is how GLP-1 reduces levels of glucose in the blood. Now, GLP-1 receptor agonist, namely exenatide, liraglutide, bind to GLP-1 receptors on the pancreas and reduce postprandial that is after meal and fasting glucose levels in the blood. And therefore, these drugs are used in the treatment of 
type 2 diabetes mellitus. Uh, now let's discuss uh, about DPP4. Now dipeptidyl peptidase 4 is an enzyme that causes rapid degradation or rapid breakdown of GLP-1. So this endogenously naturally produced GLP-1 is rapidly broken down to inactive metabolites by DPP-4. Now DPP-4 inhibitors like uh, cetagliptin, vildagliptin, sexagliptin inhibit the enzyme DPP-4 and thereby these drugs prevent the metabolism of GLP-1. Thus, these drugs increase the effectiveness of naturally produced GLP-1 by inhibiting their breakdown. So, both these category of drugs, uh, namely GLP-1 receptor agonist and DPP-4 inhibitors, increase the effectiveness of GLP-1. They increase insulin secretion and they reduce uh, the secretion of glucagon. So, now let's first discuss pharmacology of GLP-1 receptor agonists. Now, exenatide, liraglutide are GLP-1 receptor agonists. Now, uh, as GLP-1 is an incretin, these drugs are also called as incretin mimetics. Now, GLP-1 receptor agonists are synthetic drugs. Now, these drugs are DPP-4 resistant GLP-1 analogs. That means these drugs are not broken down by DPP-4 and these are termed as analogs as their effects are like that of GLP-1. Now, let's uh, see to the mechanism of action of uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist. Now, GLP-1 receptors are located on beta and alpha cells of pancreas, then on central and peripheral neurons, gastrointestinal mucosa, etc. Now, these drugs, they bind to GLP-1 receptors and produce their actions. Now, let's discuss pharmacological actions of uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist and how they reduce levels of glucose in the blood. Now, as discussed, uh, these drugs bind to uh, GLP-1 receptors which are located on the beta cells of pancreas and thereby increase the insulin secretion. Now, very important, these drugs induce increase in the insulin secretion only when the levels of glucose are high in the blood and therefore these drugs do not produce hypoglycemia. Now in addition to this uh, these drugs also inhibit release of uh, glucagon from the alpha cells. Now this also reduces concentration of glucose in the blood. Uh, thus these drugs cause lowering of postprandial that is after meal as well as fasting blood glucose levels. Now as these drugs reduce levels of glucose in the blood, these drugs also reduce the levels of glycated hemoglobin in the blood. Now glycated hemoglobin is a parameter that shows that these drugs are effective in controlling type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now, GLP-1 receptor agonists are also believed to preserve and thus protect the functioning of beta cells. Now, in addition to this, uh, these drugs uh, slow down the process of uh, gastric emptying. Uh, they reduce the intake of food, improve satiety and this reduces body weight. Now, very effective in uh, reduction in the body weight uh, is very effective in controlling the type 2 diabetes mellitus because obesity is a risk factor for the development of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Thus, as discussed, benefit of uh, these drugs are lowering of uh, postprandial and fasting blood glucose levels, then lowering of glycated hemoglobin, lowering of uh, body weight and uh, these drugs do not produce the risk of hypoglycemia. Uh, now, few important pharmacokinetic parameters. 
Now, GLP-1 receptor agonists are hormones. These are peptides. That means these are proteins. So, these are destroyed if given orally. So, major disadvantages of uh, these drugs is this that they are administered by subcutaneous injection. And after subcutaneous injection, exenatide has a half-life of around 3 hours and duration of action of 6 to 10 hours. Whereas liraglutide has a half-life of more than 12 hours and its duration of action is also more than 24 hours. Now, indications. Uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists are used as add-on drugs in combination with other anti-diabetic drugs like metformin sulfonylureas for the management of poorly controlled type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now talking about the adverse effects, these drugs produce mainly gastrointestinal side effects like uh, nausea and vomiting and these drugs are also uh, known to cause increased risk of pancreatitis and these drugs are contraindicated in patients with pre-existing gastrointestinal motility disorders. Now, after GLP-1 receptor agonist, let dis let's discuss the pharmacology of uh, dipeptidyl, peptidase 4, uh, that is DPP-4 inhibitors. And uh, these drugs are also called as gliptins. Now, uh, these include drugs like uh, cetagliptin, uh, vildagliptin, sexagliptin, alogliptin, uh, linagliptin. Now, as already discussed, uh, enzyme dipeptidyl peptidase 4 in short DPP4 cause rapid breakdown of naturally or endogenously produced GLP1. So it breaks GLP1 to inactive metabolites. Now DPP4 inhibitors inhibit the breakdown of GLP1. So GLP1 is not broken down uh, and this causes the increased effectiveness of GLP1. So, GLP-1 binds to GLP-1 receptors on uh, beta cells of the pancreas and uh, this causes uh, increase in the insulin secretion and uh, this increased insulin secretion is dependent on the levels of glucose in the blood. So, they induce increased insulin secretion when levels of glucose are high in the blood. And therefore, these drugs do not cause hypoglycemia. In addition to this, uh, they also inhibit the release of glucagon by the alpha cells of pancreas. So, increased insulin and reduced glucagon secretion reduces the levels of glucose in the blood. And uh, therefore, these drugs produce lowering of postprandial that is after meal as well as fasting blood glucose levels. These drugs also reduce glycated hemoglobin in the blood similar to GLP-1 receptor agonist. And these drugs are also used as add-on drugs in combination with other anti-diabetic drugs for the management of poorly controlled type 2 diabetes mellitus. However, unlike GLP-1 receptor agonist, these drugs are administered orally and they uh, do not usually cause any change in the weight of the patient. Uh, now, few important pharmacokinetic parameters of uh, DPP-4 inhibitors. Now, these drugs are administered orally and these drugs are primarily excreted in urine except linagliptin. Now, cetagliptin has a half-life of 12 hours and duration of action of 24 hours. Now, vildagliptin has a half-life of 2 to 4 hours and duration of action of 12 to 24 hours. Now, sexagliptin has a half-life of 2 to 4 hours. It uh, produces active metabolites and uh, active metabolite uh, shows a half-life of 3 to 7 hours and its duration of action is 24 hours. Now, adverse effects. Uh, these drugs produce adverse effects like diarrhea, constipation, arthralgia, that is joint pain, nasopharyngitis, upper respiratory tract infection, and mild urinary infection. Now, these drugs also increase the risk of pancreatitis. They can also cause headache and dizziness. Now, uh, contraindications to these drugs are liver failure, renal failure, 
and allergy or hypersensitivity. Now indications, now uh, similar to uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist, uh, these drugs are also used as uh, add-on therapy. These drugs are also used in combination with uh, other anti-diabetic drugs uh, to control uh, poorly controlled type 2 diabetes mellitus. So, this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, GLP-1 receptor agonist and uh, DPP-4 inhibitors. Please note information provided in this video is only for academic informative purpose. For use of any of these drugs or for the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, please consult your physician. Do not self-medicate yourself. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.